Good day, my super fantastic science boffins. Just to let you know, I miss you all. Your faces, your energy and the amazing science lessons we used to have. Hope you are ready for today's lesson. Let's have some fun. Great sixes, today's topic is ecosystems and food webs. We did touch on this topic in term one, so let's just do a recap. An ecosystem, as you know, is made up of living things and non-living things in a particular area. This would include, let's say, living things, plants and animals, non-living things, rocks, sunlight, soil, sand and water. Now, something very important that you need to know is there's a relationship between living things and non-living things. They need each other for survival. Now, if we think of the relationship, living things depend on non-living things. Us as humans, we depend on water to survive. We also depend on air to breathe. Now, let's think of another example. A living thing would require water and air to survive. Things like zebras, lion, any kind of animal. Let's think of the relationship between a living thing and a non-living thing. Now remember, a lion would depend on a zebra as that would be the lion's food source. Some animals need to feed on plants while other animals will feed on each other. Now, very important grade sixes, an ecosystem contains many kinds of life and many different species. Now, a grassland, for example, will not have the same species as a wetland. We won't find a zebra floating in the river and surviving there. Yes, you would find a zebra drinking water or maybe taking a bath or when they migrate walking through the river. But we definitely won't see them just living and swimming all day long because there are predators that can eat them. Now, would we find, let's say, an elephant in a marine environment? Now, a marine ecosystem would be an ocean. Do you really think we would see an elephant floating in the ocean? No, they wouldn't be able to find a food source or they won't even be able to breathe for long. So grade sixes, let's talk about the different ecosystems. Now I know we did talk about them, but let's continue. Different types of ecosystems we have in the world around us would be grasslands, wetlands. Now remember a wetland could be river, dam or a pond. But remember, the sea would also consider as a wetland. Forests is another example of an ecosystem. You also get a tundra ecosystem, a freshwater ecosystem, and of course, a marine ecosystem. Now, very importantly, grade sixes, we could sum up a sea ecosystem as a coral reef system. Now, what I want you to understand in every ecosystem, they are made up and consist of different things. There is a different amount of light in each ecosystem. There is a different amount of water in each ecosystem. Every ecosystem has a different type of temperature, different plants, different animals, and each ecosystem has different threats. This is very important for us to know. So Great Sixes, now we're going to take a deeper look into food chains and food webs. Now I know you've done this in Grade 4 and 5, but let's continue. A food chain. When we think of a food chain, a food chain only shows one organism that each animal in the food chain feeds on. So it only involves one organism. Now, an example of a food chain would be 
A lion eats a zebra. A tiger eats an antelope. Or a crocodile eats an impala. A food web. Now, what's the difference between a food chain and a food web? Let's get into it. A food web represents a number of linked food chains. So not one, multiple. And this shows the feeding relationship between plants and animals. A food web is a way to show the different organisms that animals feed on. So this is one big web. Now think of a spider. A spider's web is amazing. So this food web would look something like that, where multiple organisms feed on different things. So if we think of a food web, let's look at an example. A lion, it's a zebra, impala and a wildebeest. But now remember grade sixes, we have producers, consumers and decomposers. These play a role in food webs. Parts of a food web. Now we all know what is a food chain and what is a food web. But now we need to look in depth to what parts are there in a food web. So the first part of a food web is a producer. Now if you sit and think what is a producer? I want you to sit and think about who produces the food that you have in your home right now or that lovely bed that you are sleeping in. Hmm. In my household, it would be my mother and my father. In yours, I'm not sure. But let's get back to the animal kingdom. What is a producer? It's an organism that makes its own food. Now, in term one, we touched on a beautiful topic, photosynthesis. And there was one thing we learned about photosynthesis. Plants make their own food. So a plant is a perfect example of what a producer is. Now let's recap. A producer is an organism that makes its own food. Now a producer provides energy for the rest of the ecosystem. The second part of a food web would be what is a consumer? Mm. Now I'm pretty sure you are consuming those beautiful sweets and chocolates at home. So, perfect. If you thought of that, let's continue. A consumer needs to eat in order to obtain energy. We all need to eat and we need to eat for energy so that we continue through our day. Now, in the animal kingdom, animals that eat plants or other animals, that would be considered a consumer. The third part of a food web is a decomposer. Hmm. Let's take a minute to think. Think of a lion kill. The lion just killed the zebra. <gasps> okay, now the lion are eating the zebra. And now we get into the gruesome part, just think about it, where they've eaten quite a lot of the meat. But now we have things called scavengers, and they come and try and take their part of the meal. Scavengers would be animals like cut and go, jackals, hyenas, and even vultures. So what they do is they take their pot and they start to tear away all the meat and flesh that is left. Then comes the most important part, the decomposers. Decomposers are micro, micro, remember what I taught you? Micro means you can only see them under a microscope. So microorganisms, they break down the dead plant or the dead animal and they change it into nutrients for the soil. Examples of this would be bacteria, fungi and other invertebrates. Now, wow! Think of that dead zebra now. The carcass is clean and they've provided energy for a number of different species. That's amazing, isn't it? Hmm. Let's think a bit about the types of consumers we get. Number one, a herbivore. Now I know you know what a herbivore is, but let's just recap. A herbivore eats only plants. 
A perfect example would be a zebra. Second part of a consumer would be a carnivore. And what is a carnivore, you tell me? It eats only animals. An example would be a lion. And the third type of consumer would be an omnivore. An omnivore, that's a lucky kind of animal. It eats plants and animals. What would an example of, of an omnivore be? Well, a monkey. And of course, humans. So that's it for today, grade sixes, but something very important. Stop, grab those ears, and pay attention. Now, please make sure that you have copied the ecosystem and food web PowerPoint presentation into your workbooks. Now I know some of you might have printed it out. You are more than welcome. If you have the printed version, or if you have just copied it down, I'm happy with that. You need these notes for your tests and exams. Very important. All the answers to the activities and worksheets that I provided you with during the lockdown period will be uploaded to the Google Classroom. Please, grade sixes, use the rest of this lesson to mark and do your corrections. Now, yes, your parents can download and print the answers to all the worksheets that I provided you with. That will also work. Thank you for attending this wonderful online class. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me on the WhatsApp group, Google Classroom, or any other way you can get hold of me. Just know I miss you all very much. Stay safe.